Management of road traffic is a complex task that demands a high sense of coordination, maturity, and a broad skill set, especially in a cosmopolitan environment such as Ogun State. The Ogun State Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Agency, TRACE, was established 15 years ago and saddled with the responsibility of managing road traffic and other allied matters in the state. I commend the organizers who have deemed it fit to put up the anniversary lecture and the 5th Annual Corps Commanders Conference, which we are witnessing today. Once again, I commend all those who have, in one way or another, contributed to the hosting of this very timely event. To us in the public service, today's conference marks another unique milestone as it represents an important phase in government's efforts to strengthen and consolidate on modern traffic management system in Ogun State. The fact that this initiative is coming to life literally when our roads are being widened carries with a very symbolic significance as it demonstrates our readiness to put our dear state in an atmosphere that is both organized and stress-free. Here in Ogun State, the government has made concerted efforts to create a solid platform for the industrial and commercial development of our state. Its policy trust is premised on widening the economic base to generate increased prosperity for our people and enhance confidence among investors. As you will observe, there has been an heightening of the tempo of economic and commercial activities since 2019. One of the results of this is the unprecedented surge in the volume of vehicular traffic within and across the state. As we celebrate the 15th anniversary of trace establishment, I charge you as officers and men to continue to rise up to the challenges of this upsurge in traffic situation in the state by ensuring that we effectively oversee all the major towns in the state. I also implore the Trace Corps commanders so continue to intensify your efforts as creating public awareness, enforcement and adoption of contemporary technology in trauma and rescue services, as well as ensuring robust partnerships. These, among others, are requirements that guarantee safety on our roads. As I end this remark, let me once again register my sincere gratitude to our people-oriented governor, His Excellency Prince Dapadiyodwe Mepab, for approving this important conference for Trace Corps Commanders. Also, I commend the Trace Corps Commander, CEO, the entire members of the Trace Corps, and all those who have in one way or another contributed to the hosting of this very timely event. I wish you all a fruitful dedication. I thank you all for listening and God bless. In the bid to keep its officers, especially those in Commander Cadres abreast of modern methods of traffic management, the Corps has in the last five years put them through regular training using the Trace Corps Commanders Conference as a platform for its human capital development. In terms of evaluation, the last evaluation, the first E is engineering. Engineering has to do with the road construction, road infrastructure, road furnitures. The E, the next E has to be to do with enlightenment and enlighten of the people motoring public road users, and even enlightenment of the uh, traffic managers. The third one is enforcement, which has to serve as corrective measures for lawless motoring public recalcitrant drivers. Then the last E is the evaluation. The evaluation has to be coming every year, and that is what we are doing now. We are going to reassess the engineering aspect, the road construction, the probable condition of roads, how is it going to curtail the road, the traffic surveys, traffic volume, density, of vehicular movement in various particular types of road has to be considered, has to be re-evaluated so that we can advise that this road needs expansion, this road needs median, this road needs day by, this road needs bus stops, this road needs um, road signs and all that is evaluation of that engineering. Then evaluation of enlightenment and education, how impact the motoring public as you did to enlightenment on the road? by looking at the statistics of the road traffic accidents or road traffic crashes. We have to assess and we have looked into that. We say that we need to intensify more efforts on enlightenment. We can see that people are now lawless in this part of the world. They are suffering from psychosychiatric problems. So how do we go into it? 
because 32 years ago, FRIC was, was created. We are facing the same thing. It's fighting your seabed. 32 years of enforcement. 20 years ago, last month was created. You are still saying the same thing. Fasting your seabed. 15 years ago, trust was created. You are still saying something. Don't you see that something is wrong somewhere? So we have to change the mindset of people. How do we change the mindset of revenue? That is where the evaluation comes in. That's why the capacity building comes in now to tell our people how do we challenge, how do we challenge ourselves to ensure that people comply with us. And we've seen the aspect that basically we need to do what we call cash them on to go and meet the children and talk to their parents at home, to start from that, to go and do direct contact dissemination of information to our road users, the drivers himself, to talk to the drivers in the garages, the commercial drivers, to talk to the passengers that we are in the vehicles and everything. So these are the challenges that we are doing to ensure the... So thank you very much. I would equally like to appreciate the leadership of other security and safety agencies who are working assiduously to ensure safety and security of our people. The entire state witnessed an example of trace bravery earlier last month during the NSAS protests and the Okada Riders protest as well, in making sure that there was free flow of traffic as well as working with other security agencies in safeguarding road users and protesters. It was a difficult task. It was equally a dangerous task. But the quick thinking and immediate action of our law enforcement agencies and safety agencies also prevented what could have been a terrible tragedy. Not a single life was lost. It was a tremendous achievement and indeed commendable. However, at least on Saturday, 5th September 2020, disclosed that no fewer than 109 persons lost their lives, while 665 others sustained various degrees of injuries in various road accidents across the state between January and August this year. Though accidents are unplanned occurrences, however, our motorists and commuters must ensure that our roads are put to proper use to avoid crashes. This is why this type of gathering is important to address all aspects of traffic control, sensitize the public, and provide best practices for incident responses across the state. One of the leading causes of death and injury are road crashes. We can reduce that risk by focusing on educating our motorists on the need to ensure road traffic regulations are obeyed. And how efficiently we manage our roads by safety agencies in ensuring prompt clearing of accident scenes can prevent additional crashes. As a way forward also, I would like to enjoin the commander that there should be random capacity building programs for the officers and men of Trescor. A professor of transportation and logistics, University of Lagos, Professor Iyola, is the keynote speaker at this year's conference with the theme, Imagine Issues in road traffic and safety management, challenges and prospects. A special case for the fact that it's the main gateway to the nation's economic capital, that's Lagos. Lagos and Ugu are inseparable. You cannot easily separate them. A lot of drivers were not trained in the interland within the country. Like you know, we have only nine states having regulatory agencies you know, in Nigeria. Ogun and Lagos, uh, you know, happen to have, but all those, all those other ones that don't have, eventually they will need to drive to Lagos. By the time they are getting to Lagos, they are tired. They don't have the, you know, rudiment uh, and uh, you know, uh, rudiments of the entire driving culture. So by the time they get here, you know, uh, they get involved in accidents, and uh, at the end of the day, it's Ogun and Lagos that bear the brunt of all these happenings. 
And more importantly, you see that Ogun State is such a special state in the sense that it has a large number of uh, border towns, you know, uh, you know uh, on the western side of the state. And uh, the largest traffic that goes into Lagos have to pass through Lagos. Uh, I mean, have to pass through Ogun State, especially the Ogiri Axis. And uh, when you get to Ogiri Axis, you see the what is really happening with the issue of tankers, trailers, mummy wagons, you know, which eventually uh, add to the uh, security issues for Ogun State. So it's like uh, Ogun is even biting more than they can chew. And more importantly, you know that uh, it, those goods, you know, I'm afraid that should have been carried by rail. It's been, you know, carried by road. So the, the pressure on the, on the road is just so much. So until we are ready to uh, accept the con concept of uh, integrated and multimodal transportation, where pipelines should do certain things, where rail should carry certain goods, why you know, road should do its own, where water should do its own, we won't be able to have a, a, any serious uh, a, a solution. And more importantly, again, you see that most of those drivers are not trained at all. They just jump into the vehicles and, uh, and you can also see what is happening with uh, the use of motorcycles nowadays. You know, uh, you, know you find uh, all those motorcycles causing a lot of accidents. But the greatest problem that Ogun has is that despite all the effort being made by government and all those parasitas, they are still the largest having a you know, uh, number of uh, people killed in any crash after Kaduna, uh, uh, Kaduna comes first, then there are, thereafter you have uh, um, uh, Ogun State. So uh, it's not an interesting thing. And uh, we thank God that this kind of program is coming up today. So, so uh, we'll be able to look at it. The men have tried their best, but they can still do more. Uh, with the introduction of uh, uh, technology, with the increase of, in welfare, of the officers that are on the uh, that are on the Don't blame anybody. The point is that uh, the federal has got his own role to play. The state has got their own role to play. The local governments have also got their own role to play. So each uh, of these government uh, uh, agencies should be able to do their own. The VIO has its own role. The Federal Rural Safety Corps has its own role to play. And those uh, regulatory agencies within the states should also do their best. And uh, the uh, academia, they also have uh, a lot of uh, things to do uh, in terms of uh, training the people, giving you know, basic uh, information on signages uh, and so on and so forth, and the basic uh, fundamentals of uh, uh, safe motoring. Ogun State Governor Prince Dagbo Abiodo, who declared the conference open, expressed concern about the huge toll of road traffic crashes in the state and reiterated the resolve of his administration to complement federal government's efforts by adopting a multi-model transportation approach to tackle the challenges. He was represented by the Commissioner for Transportation, Benga Dairo. Thanks to the entire leadership and membership of the Traffic Enforcement and, and uh, Traffic Compliance and Enforcement Corps of Ubu State. On this fifth occasion, or fifth event of the Corps Commanders Conference, and also the 15th anniversary of the establishment of trees in our dear state of the state. His Excellency, which is the leadership and membership of TRES, to understand, to know and acknowledge that he is not unaware of the various challenges that TRES is facing logistically, operationally, and indeed in strategic terms. All that has been said today by the core commander, by the pioneer core commander and other speakers, are not unknown to the administration of Prince Dako Abiyogun. He has, however, asked that we all must be mindful of the challenges of our current times in our country, in our state, and indeed in the entire world. 
most of us who are gathered here, particularly from Trace, are all the senior leaders in the traffic compliance and enforcement. In their goodwill messages, guests, including the general manager, NCA Abeokuta, Mrs. Fumi Wakama, applauded Trace for effective and efficient discharge of their mandates over the years. It is imperative that I have to be here. Uh, as rightly observed, a trace in Ogo State is among the 19 state traffic agencies we have in Nigeria. And I want to say confidently and categorically that FRC is very, very instrumental in that feat. If there is no state traffic agency in Ogo State, it behoves on me. It will have been one of my principal mandates to interface with the state government to ensure that one is established in Ogo State. So having done that, it has eased the task for me. So thank you very much, Ogo State Government. And Trace being created 15 years back, we in the FRC, we are very proud of the performance of Trace. We remain, of course, the lead agency in line with global best practices. Zengo Vadiji was my instructor at the camp. He trained us during at our point of entry into the road safety. Uh, road safety is not averse to creation of state agencies like Trace. We know Trace is there to complement us and we appreciate that. As a father to Trace, I'm here to give a part on the back of the Trace. We are proud of Trace. There is no acrimony, no rancor, no competition there. We remain the lead. Now, however, I want to point out that if you observe carefully, you will have noticed that to some extent, we withdrew from enforcements within the township. We leave that mostly to trace to handle. But then, there is more to do there. I observe with dismay very, very rampant cases of traffic lighting disobedience, especially by motorcyclists. We know there are one category of road users very, very difficult to handle. Please do something about that. Uh, we may synergize with you, of course, to sanitize the situation. So thank you very much, and God bless. I always see security as, as if you are in the field of medicine, that all medicine is to prevent death. Whether you have a headache and quickly swallow some tablets, you don't want to die. Whether you hit your foot against stone and you are looking for ointment, it is because you don't want to die. So that is all of us, we are protecting lives and property. That is the summary of what I want to say. But when it gets to nitty gritty, you now have individuals, organizations specializing in certain areas. And that is why I always uh, want to appreciate what Ogun State Government is doing. Ogun State Government is one of the examples of state government that has actually, without making much noise, um, started the policy of having state police. It is a loud silence. And when people start talking about state police, I, start, I, I, I wonder whether we don't really have it already. If uh, the state will also arrest you, they will also invite you, will also be fined. You also have the so safe, and they are all backed by law. I think um, whatever you do is what we are going to start learning from what community policing is all about. So you are going to be our role model. Whatever you do is what you are going to keep on learning from, um, so that if you don't also do it well, we will know whether we should um, also keep on telling the federal government that there should be no state police. But if you are also doing it well, we will say that we have an example in trace in the local state. So let us, let's use them for prototype. We continue to create more and better synergy with trace. For the trace officers, I want to commend you, I want to congratulate you on the anniversary. 
I'm sure a lot of you can testify to what we're doing. Is that correct? How many of you have downloaded our app, NTR Belkuta app, on Google Play Store? Ah, we're also on all social media platforms. Therefore, if you do business with NTR Belkuta, you are guaranteed to be on all our social media platforms. And I want to commend and thank the commander. I don't know where he is right now for having keyed into that. He is one of the few people who believe in what we are doing and he has supported us. Effective next Thursday, you will begin to watch Trace Half Hour on NTA Abel Kuta. That is a big milestone, really appreciate you. So, on that note, let me congratulate um, Trace for 15 years of anniversary. Congratulations, sir. Congratulations, everyone.